In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to make hue forges on a Bamboo Lab 3D printer, whether it's an A1, a P1S, an X1, or the newer H2D. Let's get straight into it. So let me show you a couple examples of what I've done. I mean, you can see the stuff behind me, but this is a cool one that I like to show. It's like a tortoise with a tree on its back, because why not? So I'm going to show you how to do normal hue forges, which is the, uh, the square ones, and then the custom shaped ones as well. Okay, so obviously the first step is actually getting the Hue Forge software itself. So in order to get a Hue Forge software yourself, just go to Google, type in Hue Forge, simple as that, right? And yeah, it's just shop.hueforge.com. So it's a paid software, you can get a personal license. And once you've downloaded that and everything, you can also get like a free filament as well if you're in the US. But yeah, once you've downloaded that, then you want to open it. And I just go to the exe file. Just search it on your system and then it's going to open up the actual Hue Forge software. So let me just kind of take you around and explain a few things about this. So here you have your filaments that you need to fill in on the software. And the way to kind of fill in um, like new filaments, basically you have your filament library over here. And you just add in a new filament here, pick your color, and then you also, you know, you can add in yeah, all that good stuff. Once you've picked your color, let's say we're adding a green, click OK. Put your name, put your brand, and a TD is basically the transmission distance. So it's like how kind of um, opaque or translucent or transparent the filament is. So if you can easily see through the filament, then that's going to be a high TD. So it's like a high number, like, you know, I'll say five to 10 is pretty high. Obviously it goes higher than that. But then like standard numbers or more opaque TDs would be like one, two, three, I guess, you know, kind of in that range. So most TDs that you come across, it's going to be usually between like one and five. And you do get some more kind of transparent ones in the higher numbers, like, you know, seven, eight, up to 10. And like transparent or clear is like the highest, which is about 16, right? So yeah, once you add it in, then it's going to save to your library. So let's just put in test filament blue, just a random one. Let's say it's a two TD. You just want to save that and you can filter through. So you now you can just type in any color and it's going to have like an archive of filaments that you've saved. And there's a way to do the TD. You can do the seashell test. So in the actual Hue Forge folder that you got, you're going to have, you know, you can open file location to get into the folder, the tools, and it's the seashell test and the seashell method. So basically follow the steps in this, in this PDF and it's going to tell you how to kind of fill in the TDs by matching up like how much detail comes through in the seashell test that you print. So that's how you kind of fill in your, your TDs and all that good stuff. But yeah, once you've got your filaments in, then the next step is to get an image. So let me see if I have like something. Well, let me just quickly go to Google. Yeah, you can type in, you know, tiger, Let's get a nice random image. I think this one looks pretty cool. Or maybe I think something close up might be a bit better. So let's try try this. What I'm feeling. I think this one will probably be good. Yeah. So let's right click, save image as and tiger. Simple as that. Now you go to Hue Force software and you just basically drag in that file into there. And see, you can see like a representation right there of the, the model. So usually you're going to have like some default colors. It's usually grayscale. Okay. So now that we have our image in Hue Forge, obviously you see the preview, you see a representation of that. Yeah. So for this example, we can just do a grayscale one to keep it real simple. You know, for your first like three or four Hue Forges, I do recommend just doing a grayscale. So you get an understanding of the process. Grayscale is probably the easiest one because it's hard to kind of get that wrong. Right. You get some practice in and then you can start to add colors in after that. So what I'd recommend a lot is just kind of practicing moving the sliders around to see how images come out. So what I like to do is see how much detail I want of the black. So once I'm like happy with how much detail it is, then I'll move on to the next slider. And then once I'm happy with the detail of that, move on to the next slider. Once you're happy with that detail, move on to the next one. It's kind of follow that process. So 
usually you might want to focus on one specific area maybe let's say the eyes you want it to be like real intense or something like that you might do something like like that you might just want that black area right there rather than having it show all the way through right so that's layer 11 this one you might pop that down a bit or up a bit depending on how much detail you want on other areas so if you're still focusing on the eyes then you can kind of see how much blends through and comes in you can kind of just work your way up using that method or you can just kind of see how it looks overall and come back to it but you can always obviously move the sliders and see what kind of combinations look the best and yeah once you're happy with something then you just want to double check a couple of things so the width that's like obviously the width and the height of the image so it's going to be relative to the actual you know dimensions of the photo that you you know import into the software and if you do change it then it's going to automatically change like the height as well so let's keep that in mind so we can just have that back you know around 250. yeah so you have the base thickness 0.72 is a pretty good number and then you have the blend depth so the blend depth is how much um how much depth you have of the actual layers past like the base of the model so it's basically the actual model itself how the colors transition and mesh together so right now i have a 0.72 base thickness so you see how it it changes from here it's still the same but once you get to 0.72 you can see the actual detail on the image itself starts to come in so that's basically what the base thickness is it's like how much of the model is happening without the detail of the actual viewforge itself now those are kind of the main settings that you need to know of um, another couple of things you can look at the led colors and stuff like that you don't really need to play around with these you can just kind of leave these the same the mesh mode you can have like you no know, color pop a lot of people like to use color match so it matches a little bit better with the image here obviously for, for grayscale we don't really need to do that so we can just kind of leave that there i like to leave the the depth mode as dynamic so it changes with the color changes of the filament you can also have a static depth so if you drag this lower the mesh doesn't change in terms of its um in terms of its depth but if we have dynamic and then we go lower then you can see the changes in the mesh mesh height so it doesn't really take too long to do a hue forge once you have that you just click Control s and that's going to save it that's going to save three files for you so you save as whatever you want you know go to the folder that is saved in and you're going to have the the stl file with your slicer you're going to have the description file which is where you're going to make the layer changes and then you're going to have the hue forge file itself which is this file here with your picture and the filaments in there so what you want to do is open up the stl and then you have the base layer so for me i put down 0.24 and what that means is you don't have to go thin on the first few layers because it doesn't actually affect how the image comes out it's just like the base of it because as you can see we've got the base thickness of 0.72 and this is a multiplier of like 0.24 so we can do three layers of 0.24 to get this rather than doing a 0.08 layer height and having to do nine layers which doesn't have an impact on the actual image itself so now we have this imported into bamboo studio so what you want to do is basically you want to create a, a profile i've already created one for hue forges so if we have our description file it's going to tell you which settings you need so 100 percent info just over in the strength tab now put 100 percent info next up you know you've got the size and yeah layer height is 0 0.08 so make sure you have 0 0.08 there and then we've got the base height of 0 0.24 that just shows it there yeah, 0 0.24 and then it even tells you here you may print at high layer heights below the base thickness of 0 0.72 which means we can do three layers of 0 0.24 let's so quickly calculate 0 0.72 divided by three that's 0 0.24 three times 
And in order to do this, what you want to do is actually right click and hit height range modifier. Go to range over here and put in 0.72. Now what you want to do is put a layer height of 0.24 here. And what that means is we're going to have 0.24 layer height until we reach 0.72. And then what you want to do is slice this file. And it does take a while to slice you forges usually. Um, that's kind of regular stuff. So you have to just kind of just wait for that. Okay, so once you first slice the file, it's going to look a bit weird. What you're going to do is you're going to get your description file and start to input the different filament colors at this specific layers. And the thing is, because we changed the base layer and stuff like that, rather than going at the layer number, we want to go at the actual height. So start off with black. Yeah, 1.04 millimeters. We switch over to the dark gray. So 1.04 is right here. Change filament to the dark gray. 1.68, we swap to light gray. It's right over here. And then at 2.08, we switch over to white. And once you've done that, then you want to re-slice the plate and it should slice a lot quicker than before because it's already kind of sliced before, right? But it can still take a bit of time. So we'll wait for that. And there is actually a trick that someone kind of mentioned, which is add like a simple shape, like a cube, and then do your slice layers with just a cube. And then obviously you do all your slicing there. And then after you add the hue forge in, so you don't have to waste time doing the slices with the heat forge you just do it with the cube and that should help it be a lot quicker okay so now that the file has finished slicing you're going to get a nice representation of how it looks in the slicer you just want to double check that's looking similar to what you had back in heat forge and if you click the middle mouse button that shows you like a slicer preview so that's going to be more kind of similar and you can click this button here get the slicer preview as well so that looks good to me. Um, got the color changes in there. It's going to take nine hours for this print, which is a decent amount of time. And only three color changes, which is pretty good. So yeah, once you've done that, you know, just send it to your printer as usual, and that's going to come out. Now I'll quickly show you the way to get kind of custom shapes in your Hue Forges, similar to, you know, these models here. You know, we've got Tiger Woods, Tom Brady, Kobe, and Bulbasaur. So basically you need to take an image and you need to remove the background from the image. So let's quickly go ahead and do that. You can find like another, another Tiger model. Go up to images and let's say you want to get maybe a kind of custom shape of this Tiger right here. Yeah? So save the image. Let's call it Tiger Transparent or Tiger Custom Shape. And all you have to do is get a background remover. Remove the BG, simple enough. Now you just drag the file into there. That's going to take the background out. Now you download this, get the free preview version. And you just go ahead and pop it into the Hue Forge. So we can probably get a new a new Hue Forge file just so we can have this one saved. Let's discard that. Okay, now we have our new Hue Forge open. You just pop in the the new file. So you see that's transparent, and you can tell it's transparent because of the checkered shape. And this is already selected on. If it was off, then it'd show this. So we've got this transparent shape. You can see the the um, background remover kind of cut out some important parts here. So what you could do is do the erase restore part. Uh, magic brush. So you want to restore. Okay, so it's basically because the snow's covering it, it's not too good of an image. So maybe we can look for a different one where the whole the whole tiger, like you can see it, right? Something like this may maybe better. I'm trying to think that angle is not the best for a Hue Forge. This one doesn't look too bad. You can still see a decent amount. So yeah, let's go ahead and try this one. 
standing white tiger. Let's do the same thing. Uh, go back to the home page. Just drag this one in. I want to see how this one comes up. So let that work its magic. Okay, I just missed that. Okay, let's try a pixel cut. Maybe it'll work a bit better. So I usually use Canva, but the background remover is like a paid, it's part of the paid version. So I'm just using the, the free software. So yeah, that looks pretty good. Go ahead and download this, get a free resolution version. And then pop this back into the software. And yeah, that looks a lot better. You see the transparent version and the non-transparent version between these two. But yeah, once you save that, we can just can just keep these sliders here, I guess, just so we can show you in the software. So tag or custom shape. What we can do is just add in another plate, just so we can see how this looks. So downloads, let's import that in. And let's see. So it looks like it is a rectangle, but once you actually slice it, you'll see the actual preview of how it looks. Okay, so that's the preview. And then we want to add in the, the layers. So we go over to downloads, go to the description file. And we're starting off with black, 1.44. Remember we're going by the, the layer heights. I'm also thinking if the the custom height range modifiers on. Let's see. So we put the custom height range modifier 0.72, 0 0.2 for layer height. Then we're going to quickly slice this file. And then we can add in the filament changes. So 1.44, let's switch over to dark gray, 1.84 is light gray, and then 2.24 is white. Let me just slice that, wait for that to finish, and then we can get a nice preview of how it's actually going to look once it's 3D printed. So yeah, it looks very good. And you can see custom shape, you know, compared to the usual kind of square or rectangle shape. So yeah, that's how you get a nice custom shape hue forge. Yeah, switch out your filaments, make sure it looks all good, and yeah, should come out really nice. Pretty simple process once you understand it. The main thing is getting the TDs right. You know, it doesn't have to be perfect, but it just has to be kind of, you know, around about the right TD. You could be like one or two off, and it's gonna look a bit different, but if you're using the grayscale, it's a lot more forgiving compared to like the colors. Because obviously, you know, the greys, the whites, the, the blacks are kind of going to blend into each other. But the colours, you're going to see like a big difference between, you know, say a blue and a red, for example. So yeah, that's a quick video on how to use Bamboo Lab to get a Hue Forge free print. Hopefully that was helpful. Make sure to subscribe, like the video and comment below, you know, if you want any new videos or if you found this video helpful.